Hello, scientists, and welcome to day 26 of our science. This week is going to be really exciting because we're actually going to do engineering challenges each day along with the read aloud. Today's read aloud is The Most Magnificent Thing by Ashley Spires. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things. He unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. And all she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. So first, she hires her assistant. Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and they get to work. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around the one side. Her assistant examines the other. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or even good. It's, it isn't even kind of sort of okay. It's all wrong. The girl tosses it aside, but she gives it another go. I'm glad she's sticking with it. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong, but she decides to try again. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands, she examines, she stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens and fixes fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it legs. She even adds an antenna. She makes it fuzzy. She makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. Even smells like stinky cheese. But none of these things are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that she has in her mind. So she gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She plummels the bits in. Her hands are too big now to work. Her brain is too full of all not right things. If only the thing would just work. Crunch hand starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she explodes. It's not her finest moment. I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. It's not much help at first, but before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are starting to come again, but she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong thing that are quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she does like. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and thoughtfully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure that there are no distractions. Meanwhile, let's look at what these people are saying. Well, this is the perfect thing to ward off bears. Ooh, this is just what I need to stop that leak. Haha, <laughs> this one's all wet. That afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she is finished and she alerts her assistant.
The pear take a good long look. It does lean a little bit to the left. It's a bit heavier than she expected. The color, it could use a little work. But it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and they take it for a spin. They're not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. All right, scientists, this is a really good book to start our engineering challenge with because it shows you how engineers and scientists, sometimes we can get frustrated and need to let the mad feelings out and keep trying and look at what went well the first time and what we need to still tinker with. So here is today's challenge. You have to create something that will move from one side of your kitchen floor to the other, but you can't touch it with your hands. It has to be wind powered. What that means is you'll use a straw or something like it and you can follow behind, but you or the straw can never touch your creation. Once you've created something, can you tweak it to make it go even faster? Good luck scientists and see you tomorrow.